Hi, this is Carl Irwin, and uh, we're going to take another look at um, mock-up in MuseScore 4. This is uh, 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 a more finished rendition of a film score that I'm working on. Uh, this is probably the final uh, rendition of it, at least a portion of it, a section of it. And I just want to take a moment to look at... Um, some of the techniques being used here. Now off the bat, I do have to, again, do my due diligence here to remind everybody that MuseScore 4 is very ill-equipped to do film score. Um, it does not have syncing capabilities. It used to. Uh, the previous iterations of it had that capability, but that has since been lost with the um, upgrade to MuseScore 4. This is actually a regression uh, in the capability of the uh, program that it does not sync to picture anymore. There's no uh, uh, MIDI clock that can be sent out to clock aware programs to do picture sync. There's no video player either. So um, I have to say that at the onset. However, because the playback engine is so powerful, it's extremely good for mock-up. Um, it's, you know, it's certainly great to write in, but it's really great for mock-up because of that uh, play engine and the sound sample set that have uh, been added to the software and are improving uh, at a rapid pace. Uh, and that's really what I want to focus on here right now. So this is um, a more polished rendition, and this is probably what it will be in the final edit, uh, the film, the the. Uh, director uh, was very pleased with this uh, rendition the last time that we communicated and has been now locking his animation. It's an animation. It's a short animation. Locking the animation to this rendition. So it, we're, we're essentially at picture lock, even though picture lock is not really set for another couple of weeks. Uh, this is probably what it will be. So uh, unless there is some kind of change in timing in the next couple of weeks, I think this is what it will be. Um, I want to talk about what's going on here in terms of the sounds. As you look at this, this is not something that I think anybody would want to play from, not a performer. A performer would not want to read uh, a rendered out sheet music uh, with uh, the notation written in this way. That is not our concern because this is never going to be played by anybody. This is only ever going to be played by MuseScore. So there is an oversaturation of dynamics and extreme dynamics uh, and articulations that are placed in here in order to get a particular kind of uh, performance from the play engine. What I want to talk about here is instrument mixing. Um, you'll notice that this is essentially scored for a string orchestra, a piano, a guitar, a celeste, and a bells. And that's essentially the entire complement. But if you look at the score, you'll see there's actually a couple of pianos. There's a couple of guitars. There is an extended string section where you have um, multiple ver versions of the same part. What I want to do is look at the mixer, and I just want to show you uh, the way you can think about sound in MuseScore 4 that is not dissimilar from the way we think about sound in digital audio workstations. So in a DAW, in a digital audio workstation, if we're creating a, a mock-up, what we would do is we would mix and match various sound sets in order to get the type of sound that we're looking for. This may involve, like in a string section, mixing some samples from one library with samples from another library. It might be mixing ensemble patches with solo patches and panning them in certain ways. Now that's what's going on here. If you look, I've got a solo instrument iteration of every uh, ensemble patch that I have. So Violin 1 has its own patch using the ensemble violin uh, uh, samples that come in MuseScore for the Muse sounds. But I also have a solo violin, and you can see that I set the pan slightly different. So I've made the pan for the solo instrument a little bit more extreme. So this is at uh, negative 80 rather than where the section is at at negative 70. So it's a little bit more extreme kind of out on the fringe edge. Uh, but I also change the pan, or the uh, rather the um, uh, uh, fader, so that it's a little bit softer, and it reads um, uh, in the playback 
as if it's a single instrument playing out of the section. The section is a little bit louder. I also cranked the reverb on the solo instrument, so it would sound like a single instrument in a larger space, but a single instrument coming out of a larger group. These are the details that you you pay attention to when you're working in digital audio workstation MIDI mock-up. We're just applying the same idea to MuseScore 4's play engine. Okay, so that is the string section. You can see this uh, duplicated throughout all of the other uh, instruments. I also have a sub bass, and it's a warm synthesizer. It's just using the classic MS warm synthesizer sound. And I have that set very, very low. Uh, that is uh, duplicating the contra bass section an octave lower. And it's giving me a sub bass, which is something you would do typically in a digital audio workstation mock up, where you would accentuate the bass sound by putting in a sub bass. And I'm just doing it directly here. Um, let's talk about the other instruments, though, very quickly. If you look at uh, the piano, there's two pianos. I've got two pianos. I've got the grand piano, but then I also have the soft piano. The soft piano is set a little softer, and I have the reverb cranked way up, but I have them both uh, set in pan to zero. So they're playing from the same central location. And this is an, about mixing and matching sounds from two instruments to create a new sound of a single instrument. I wanted some of the qualities of the soft piano, the intimacy of the sound of the soft piano, where you can hear very up close and personal kinds of sounds, actuations coming from the instrument itself, the hammers actually moving and whatnot. Um, and then I just increased the reverb on that to give a little bit more of that softer body to the regular grand piano sound. It just kind of gave me a hybrid in between. And again, you would do this in a DAW. Uh, with uh, maybe an instrument that has sound samples from both types of recordings that can crossfade between the two. We're just doing it manually here uh, in uh, MuseScore rather than doing it manually with many different settings in the DAW. Similarly, I have the classical guitar sound. Now, up to this point, we had been using the uh, classic, MS Classic uh, guitar sound, and uh, that was fine. It was working out well, which is why on the classical guitar, on the guitar, I have all these extreme dynamic changes. That was to give a good performance using the older sound. What I've done, though, is I now put in the new guitar sounds, and I, I talked about this on a previous uh, video, but in addition to that, I have another instance of the guitar part, and it's actually playing the harp. It's actually playing the orchestral harp, and it's set um, pretty high, higher reverb. Um, the, the harp is very soft. You can see the dynamics, so it's not playing very loudly. It's playing very soft harp sounds, um, but this is actually doing the same thing that I did with the piano. I'm increasing the body, the resonance of the guitar, the classical guitar sound, but it still sounds like a classical guitar, so it's a trick. It's a trick using another instrument to double and then using the mixing parameters and the reverb to give it its own space within the actual instrument that is being recognized. Um, and this is really what I wanted to point you to, uh, is this kind of, this kind of uh, attention to detail. Now, I want you to listen to it again, knowing now what you know. Uh, let's take a listen and see if you can hear what this does for the sound.
Okay, so you can see the intimacy uh, that we create using this uh, kind of technique, right? Now, uh, the Muse score sounds are already very good. They're already, I mean, just if you just create a score, just compose a score in Muse score 4 and then have it play back just as you would write it for people to read, you will get uh, an output that rivals hours, if not days of work inside of a digital audio workstation with very expensive libraries, just the way it is. But in this way, we can kind of turn that capability up to 11. And we can make this really sound like, I mean, really sound like real people with a real conductor in a real space with real instruction and real direction, real alterations that are made on the spot, real, um, just more real, right? There's just more detail that a person, that people would choose uh, in an environment in the act of recording uh, in terms of mic placement and effects addition uh, and, ed and editing, uh, uh, instrumentalist decision-making, right, on the music itself in, in terms of performance and direction given by the director, in terms of balance and articulation. All this stuff, you can do this inside of Muse Score 4 for the purpose of performance. Again, this is not about writing music for notation purposes. This is about creating music that will be used in final render, in final polished output. And I find Muse Score 4 to be extremely capable of uh, such an endeavor for the, you know, the, the, the composer that's writing for media music or, or mocking up their own music for uh, real publication. So just a little bit of a closer look at, at some of the techniques that I've been using. Again, still waiting on MIDI sequ uh, a MIDI uh, and uh, uh, synchronization and video synchronization. I, I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting. I know there's some projects going on with that, but I'll be, I'll be frank with you. It, it, it just seems like the team, the core team, is reluctant to incorporate this work in the master branch. I don't understand why there's a pull request out there. There's another branch on MIDI uh, in Jack. I just don't understand why they're not enthusiastic about that as a feature, more so than very minutia issues that are being worked on related to uh, engraving. It seems to me that if you take care of this one issue, it just will open up the doors for use for so many people in this way to be used as a final mock-up tool um, in, in final production. And I just, I, I, they seem to have put so much attention into that. I don't understand why they haven't put their attention into the, probably the most common iteration of that type of work, which is media music composition, film, television, social media, streaming video, and video games. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I really don't get it. Um, I, I, the only assumption I can make is there's nobody on the core team and it's a small team. I do understand that. I, it may be that there's nobody on the core team that does any of that kind of work. So they don't understand the importance of it. Um, but anyway, this is what you can do in spite of the fact that it, you do kind of have to jump through an, a, a bunch of hoops to use MuseScore for that kind of composition. You can get mock-ups that are just outstanding uh, using these kinds of layering techniques. So that's it for today. Good luck with that. Happy composing and happy mixing.